All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is Jill with Go English Coach. Um, super excited to begin our classes today. Um, we've got um, our first class for the month of May is our Intermediate Grammar 1 class. And so I've got this listed here, Intermediate Grammar 1, and this is class 1 of 8. So we will have 8 total classes, okay? So I always write over here on our um, on the board. This is my general, this is the way I teach for you guys. Um, I've got um, the things that we're going to be covering. So um, present progressive and simple present, a usage overview. Now, what does that mean? Um, in general, in general, um, people who speak English as their native language use present progressive more than simple present in general. And so we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, how and when we use those tenses. Okay. And then we're going to do a little bit of comparing them. So we'll have some work together on the desk. And then we'll do, you'll have a little bit of homework for today. So this class is perfect for students who are at the intermediate level. So um, learners at the B1 or B2 level for the, um, the common European framework reference. Um, so there's the A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, and C2. Okay, so I like to call the B1, B2, the intermediate learners, okay? So simple present and present progressive, um, if you are an intermediate level student, so B1 or B2, is likely um, you've, you've studied this before, okay? So I always think that, you know, with learning and advancing your English, it's really important to refresh, okay? So let's just do a quick refresh or review of these two tenses. OK, um, I'm going to be using this book and um, I've talked about these before, but this is the book that I use for um, the intermediate grammar class um, focus on grammar three. And it's really geared towards the B1 learner. OK. OK, and I use this as my reference here and then I've got my notes here. So in general, let's talk about the timelines like when when do we use this tense? OK, so for um simple present i think this one is a little bit more kind of tricky to wrap your head around and the reason that i think that is because i do think a lot of other languages use simple present more so in my background i have studied spanish um and so i do know that in spanish they use simple present tense for things that are happening right now right Whereas in English, as a comparison, we do not do that. Um, so let's look at this. So when, if we say this is simple present, okay, and then we'll do another one here, present progressive, or sometimes people call this um, present continuous, okay, I, I probably... I usually refer to this tense as present progressive. I really hope you guys can read my writing here. But um, what I like about the word using continuous is that it's actually pretty um, descriptive, right? So it's if something is continuing, it starts and continues for a period of time, which is how you decide if this is the tense you're gonna use, okay? Um, so if this is a timeline, and we say this is right now. Okay, so let's see. I eat lunch at noon. Okay, so there's an example. Um, this is something that we're talking about. I eat lunch at noon. That's I something I do regularly or every day or daily or weekly. It's just something I do. Okay, so when we talk about when we use this, it's talking about now, and it's talking about maybe last week as well. Um, it's going to talk about when we're it, next Tuesday. You understand? So 
it can happen in the past. It can happen. Actually, it does not happen right now. Because if we're talking about it being noon, so it can happen at all of these times, things that happen regularly, okay? If we want to, we could say it in, in the present. Um, I usually, this is another eat, oops, eat lunch at noon. Okay, so that's the difference here with simple present. It's something that happens regularly or daily, maybe not every day, but with regularity, okay? So not just one time. If something is happening one time, you're gonna use the present progressive tense, okay? So let's look at this one. If we're looking at the timeline here, and this is now, present progressive, the tense for present progressive is talking about something only that happens right now, right? I am talking about English, okay? That's something I'm doing right now. And you can even put that at the end, now, or right now, okay? This is the easy, just kind of simple overview. I'm sure that all of you, if you are intermediate learners, are really familiar with these two tenses, where it starts to get a little bit more difficult is when we start looking at um, the negative versions of these and then in questions. So let's do a quick review of those tenses as well so that it's fresh in your brains, okay? So let's use these examples. Okay, I like to use um, formulas. So for me, English and language learning is kind of like a formula. I always really liked math when I was younger. Maybe that's why. But um, so I really like to use kind of formulas when we're looking at things. So let's start here with this present progressive. So we know in the in the positive, we're going to say we're going to have a subject. Right. I'm going to just abbreviate that. We're going to have the form of to be right. I am and then we're going to use the verb plus ing. There we go. And then you're going to have the rest of your sentence. So that's our formula for the positive, right? I am talking about English now. So to make this um, to make the sentence negative, um, we're going to say I am not talking <laughs> about. Okay, so, so we are simply adding this word not in between here, or uh, excuse me, here. So we're going to put that right in between that part there. Okay, so um, we're going to have the subject, the form of to be, the negative, and then the verb with ing. Okay. Um, and then remember um, some of the things uh, that go along with this tense, and I think that actually can be pretty tricky for some students, um, are the contractions. So um, let's take a look at the contractions. So let's see. Um, so when we combine that, so what are the contractions here? We've got I am, and of course we're gonna say I'm. Now, this is easy to write, but often really difficult for people to pronounce. So practicing the pronunciation of this is important. Okay, I really like to focus on pronunciation in my classes because I feel like if you, you can understand grammar, um, but if you can't properly use it and have people understand you, then it's kind of not helping anybody. Okay, so you'll always see me use this um, when using or when describing pronunciation. And then hopefully 
You guys are also going to be taking the pronunciation and fluency class. And in that class, we will, this is the, um, the international phonetic alphabet. And that is how you would use, those are the, the sounds. So it's a really helpful tool. And I really think that it works well together to take grammar and pronunciation at the same time. Um, okay, so I am goes to I'm, I'm, so practice that sound. Um, you are, of course, all of you guys probably know this, but your, okay, your, and there's no problem if you want to use the full, um, you know, if you want to say you are speaking English, um, that is fine. Instead of saying you're speaking English, there's no problem with that. But understand that you're going to hear it, as uh, you just heard me say that. You're going, you're going to hear that. And so, um, so not only when we're practicing English are we practicing for us using it ourselves, we're also practicing for listening, right? And so improving um, our listening and speaking skills helps us a lot um, in, in being able to use both sides of the language in being able to speak and then also being able to understand. Okay, the rest is he is, she is, it is. Okay, all of those go to he's, she's, and it's. Okay, and don't forget the um, apostrophe because, you know, those are really important in English, um, especially if you're having to do, you know, writing or something or in a course or in a class if you're taking the IELTS test or something like that. Um, and then again with the pronunciation here, listen to what I'm saying. He's. So actually let's do one other. So you've got huh, e and a z sound at the end. Okay. Um she's so that's Let's see, e. she's, and then it's, okay? It's has an S sound at the end. And then, um, oops, let's do we are is of course we're. That one I think can be really tricky. We're, and then there. Oops, I keep doing that the wrong way. Okay, they are there okay great so we are we're they are there right and i know in english we have three there's we have a lot of words that duplicate each other and or are pronounced the same but are spelled differently um and so i know that that can be really tricky but um just understand that we will cover a lot of those things in this class. So you are in the right place. Okay, so now that we've got the positive, okay, we have the negative, and now we have some of the contractions. So making sure that you are comfortable with all of those is gonna be really important. Um, okay, so next let's do a little bit more on this. Um, let's see, let's go over here. So this will be the present progressive. Um, so I'm not, okay, let's do another, the, the, the negative contractions with this, right? So we're going to say negative contractions. Okay. How many of you guys are comfortable with these negative contractions or your I think most of my students say, "Oh my gosh, I'm just not going to use that negative contraction because I don't know how to properly say it," right? And so let's practice that. So if we are saying, "Um, let's let's get a different sentence here." Um, I'm not um eating, I don't know, lunch today. <laughs> These are kind of boring sentences. We'll get some better ones. Okay, so I'm not, you are not. 
Okay. So if I'm saying you are not, I'm going to say eating lunch today. Okay. Um, you can abbreviate this word and combine that in a contraction. Okay. So you're going to say you are not can go to you're not or you aren't okay so there are really two ways of saying it i believe that i would say most people use this one more frequently you're not um actually i would say both are pretty much the same you aren't or you're not okay uh, let's see with this one we don't we don't have a contraction so we don't that's why i'm not talking about it if i'm saying i'm not we're going to just say i'm not we don't so this one you have a contraction this way where you're combining those right into your and then you also have another option where you're combining this one right and that is you aren't. So there's two ways to, to combine them and to make contractions and both are correct, okay? So let's go on to the next one, the third person. So I always write this in first, second, third. I hope that your teachers up until this point have done that for you. So let's look at she, how about that one? She is not, has two different ways we can do it. So she's not eating lunch today or she isn't okay isn't so making sure that you're pronouncing the key parts here is that this is a z sound she's so when you have um pronunciation she's you can feel the vibration on the z sound here z, she's Okay, that's a good way to be able to see if you are pronouncing the words correctly. Okay, and then she isn't. Again, that's like this. This is the pronunciation, isn't. Actually, there's probably another little sound in there, but okay, good. Hopefully this is just a good quick review for all of you and that none of this is new. And if it is new for you, that's okay. You're can, you, know, you can take this class get the overview of the present progressive and then the simple present and then have, um, and then go back and maybe watch it again and take some notes. And then we'll do a little bit of practice together today too. So I'm moving kind of quickly because I know that you're gonna be watching this on video and you can stop it and rewind and say, what did she say again? So um, I am moving quickly, but don't worry. You can always rewatch these videos. Okay, so we've got the first, the second, the third person. So the same thing that would happen here would be with it and, and he. So I'll just put that here in parentheses, okay? And then let's look at we, the plural first person. We, uh, let's see, we are not goes to we aren't or we're not, okay? we aren't or we're not so you can hear the difference in the pronunciation differences there we aren't aren't it's kind of a strange word and then we're we're not all right and then the plural they are not goes to let's see they're not or they aren't okay okay so you could plug that back in and make a couple of sentences on your own um just so that you can kind of refresh so you could take you know a sentence from each one i you from the subjects i you she he it we they use a negative um Use a negative form with the to be and then create your own sentences, okay? That would be good practice. So the final part of this is looking at how we form questions using this tense, okay? 
So let's go back over here. Um, okay. You guys are always welcome to, you know, screenshot, take a quick picture from your computer of the words that we're doing on here. I think that's also, you know, a good way to kind of save what we're working on before I erase it and move on to the next thing. So, okay. So yes, no questions. Okay. Let's see. He, here, let's just make the positive sentence. He is traveling. He is traveling. Okay. Very simple sentence. So we've got the subject, we've got the form of to be, and then the verb, the main verb with ing. Okay. So um, he is traveling. Okay. So then to make it a question, remember to form the question in this tense, we just switch those, the position of those. Okay. And then we use always a question mark at the end. If we don't use that, people get confused, okay? Um, okay, if we wanna make this negative, we could say isn't he traveling. And actually the meaning of both of those sentences is fairly similar. Um, you might just use this in a different form, okay? Um, and then, the, you know, when you go to answer these questions, is he traveling? The answer is either yes or no. If you want to make it a more complete answer, is he traveling? You can say yes, comma, he is, or no, he isn't. Okay. We there? Okay. Isn't he traveling? it's going to have the same answers. Yes, he is. And no, he isn't. Okay. There you go. Okay. So we've talked about how to form the present, uh, present, pre the positive present progressive tense, the negative. And now we talked about also, the contractions when using in the positive and the negative. And finally, we just discussed questions, okay? So that's a lot of information. But as I said, at the intermediate level, um, it's likely that you have already studied these. Um, and so I hope that this is easy for you. And this is just a nice refresh for you. Okay, so that's our present progressive. Let's take a quick look at how to do this with the simple um, present tense. Now, remember, when we discuss simple present, personally, I think, um, you know, the, the part that I noticed with my students, um, let's see how dirty this looks on there. <clears throat> Many mistakes that I hear my students um, make are one, this one, um, using, um, he might say he doing that, right? So what's, what is missing from this sentence? He doing that, or I walking to school. What's the problems here? There's, let's talk about this one. In this one, He's, you're missing this tiny little word, right? Not, it, you think, oh, well, it's just a small word, but it makes a difference. And I think that the reason that people make this mistake um, is because they don't hear it when somebody else is speaking, right? So if I say, he's doing that, he's doing that, he's doing that, that sound, you know, the only difference that you can hear between he doing that and he's doing that. Listen to those two again. He doing that, he's doing that, is that small Z sound that goes right in here. Okay, he's doing that. He's doing that, okay? So those little sounds in English really do have an impact on your fluency and, and your ability to communicate. So making sure that you're pronouncing those sounds there. 
So I hear a lot of students say that keep doing that, right? Or I walking to school. So this part, you know, when a when a person, let's say, is not a non-native English speaker and they are listening to somebody, maybe they don't hear this sound. I'm walking, I'm walking. It's it, I understand because it's hard. It's a small, very fast um, sound. And it really, if you say it quickly, if you say it fast, you can't really hear it, but it is important. So they're missing here, the am, and just one small sound, I'm walking, I'm walking to school, okay? So those are just two kind of common mistakes that I hear. Um, okay, let's look at the simple present tense. Um, again, let's just look at our quick, our timeline. So it's something that happens if this is now, here, 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 right? All in, in the past, in the present, and in the future, because it's something that happens often, okay? Teachers have to drink coffee, right? Okay, um, great. So this is simple present. Now, what are the problems that people typically have with this? Um, I think the problem, the biggest problem that people have with uh, the simple present is do and does. I think that when you start um, using the negative statements, I hear a lot of people say, I know like ice cream. I know want to drive the car, right? So that's that's something that we really have to um, switch over and and know that when we're going to use the negative, we need that do auxiliary verb in there. And I understand it's a really strange kind of formation and not a lot of languages use that. So it's totally understandable why people make that mistake, but we want to just make sure you guys aren't making that mistake. So in the simple present, we've got um, I travel... Um, let's see, all the time. So you can see in this part, I'm using this kind of time stamp that signifies the regularity, right? We said simple pre present is something that happens regularly or often, okay? It's something I do. I drink coffee. I go to bed at... 9 p.m. That's something I do every day, okay? Or all the time, or usually. So these are some of the um, the adverbs here that give you an indicator that you know, okay, I see that word. That means it's something that happens often or with, with regularity. Okay, so I travel all the time. Um, you travel, this is easy stuff, right, guys? Okay, here the key part is the third person changes because we add that S. Now, one thing about the S is that it sometimes is, is pronounced travels. What is that sound? It's a Z, right? Okay, sometimes um, it has an S sound. For example, with the word want, it's once. Okay, now, why is this important? The pronunciation is important because um, if you say travels, it just sounds different. It sounds different and it makes somebody who's listening to you have to kind of question what you're actually saying. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in our pronunciation and fluency class. So I travel, you travel, she, he, it travels with S. Um, we, and then the rest is all the same, right? They, we, and we're going to both use travel there. Okay. Easy, right? Okay. Let's look at doing it the negative. So then we start using, um, let's just go like this. So we'll put you, should, let's just go here. We'll do we travel. 
and we'll just make one long line here so we can kind of just transform this into the negative. Okay. So if we're going to make this a negative statement, we're going to use do and not. Okay. So I do not travel. Okay. You do not, that's not together. Those are two words. So it's do not, two separate words. It just looks, let me change that so everybody's clear here. Oh, no, period. Okay. Here's where it gets tricky. She does not travel, okay? And now again, this one is a word that I think people often mispronounce. So they'll say do, do's, right? Do's, because that's what it looks like. Um, let's say she does not travel. We do not travel. And then lastly, they do not travel. Okay. Now, of course, the next thing with these um, negative uh, simple present sentences is that we also have another set of contractions, okay? So we're going to combine, and this is important, we're going to combine that into don't, okay? Same here, don't. Don't, O, it's a long O sound. And then does not turns to doesn't. And I want you guys to practice this because I want you to be comfortable using these contractions, okay? And the reason that I think it's really important to be comfortable using them is because native, native English speakers use contractions, right? That is the sign of fluency is being able to contract or reduce the sounds in the language, right? So we have a lot of these contractions or reductions. And again, reductions, for example, is like if people say, I'm sure many of you know this, but if we say going to, and people say gonna, okay? So that's, a re that's an example of a reduction, right? Where you're taking two words and you're making it into one word. It's a reduction. And there are a lot of these, okay? And so it's kind of similar to this contraction. The difference between those two is that this is just fine in written English, okay? So if you're writing an email and you're telling your boss, uh, my coworker doesn't like to finish his work, okay? That's a completely um professional and formal way of um saying what you're trying to say my coworker doesn't like finishing his work okay or doing his work however with reductions we don't want to use that in professional written language so if you are writing an email i would like you to use going to and not gonna cuz it's not it's a, it's an informal written thing. If you are just, you know, texting a friend or writing a quick note for your English speaking friend, you can use gonna, okay? I'm going to see you later. No problem. But in a formal sense, I don't want you guys to use gonna, okay? Um in spoken English, it's fine to say gonna in pretty much all scenarios. So, at least in English, we have you know, some languages have a formality kind of scale where you, you know, change the tense of the verb to show uh, respect when speaking to somebody, maybe your boss or maybe a person you're, you don't know, or I don't know, the president or, you know, somebody really important. Um, English does not have that. And the way that we show formality is different in English. And so we'll look at some of those structures for formality in, in future classes. And you can also Google a couple of ways to show respect and formal 
uh, formality in your English speaking. Because I, I'll tell you a very quick story. Um, I was studying and teaching in South America, in Peru, in Lima, and I was living with a family, and we uh, we had a car. So I had taken the car and gone to the grocery store or something like that. And um, I did something wrong with driving and a police officer pulled me over. And I was so, so, so scared. And, but, you know, and I was, I had studied Spanish for many, many years, but I had never really had the opportunity to practice using uh, the usted form, um, in, 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 in like, cause all of the English I had done was speaking to friends or, um, you know, it wasn't in like a formal sense. So, so this police officer pulls me over. And, um, in the meantime, uh, the woman who I lived with, her name was Cecilia. She came to, and met me because I called it. I was so nervous or she saw me. I can't remember how she was there. And she got out of, you know, she got and came to the car and was like, officer, you know, why are you yelling? He was yelling at me, but I was trying to explain to him where I was going and what I was doing, but I made a mistake and I didn't use the right tense to show respect. I didn't use usted. Um, And so he was, he was angry with me. Um, (laughs) And I would never, ever, ever want that to happen to any of you because it was terrifying and I hated it. <laughs> and then I had to apologize. And so anyways, my goal was, of course, not to offend the police officer, but not feeling comfortable using that tense really put me in a bad position. <laughs> so anyways, I try to cover as many of these things for you guys as possible, but of course, you know, the real way to um, enhance your speaking is to practice. And so, um, you know, coming to these classes to prepare for conversation practice um, is really important. We have in, in um, in, in this program, we have a conversation class that will begin on Friday. So make sure you check the calendar to look at that. Um, So you can come and practice and just use your English and get some feedback from native speaking teachers. Okay. Um, Okay. So we've talked about the simple present. Um, We've got it here in the present tense, or excuse me, in the positive and then in the negative. Um, And then let's do a couple quick, just, we know these, we've got the contractions Let's look at a couple of how do we put this into the question um, form. And then, so, so yes, no questions. We've got a couple of different kinds of questions. We've got yes, no questions. We've got clarifying questions. We have um, WH questions. So let's look at yes, no questions. So um, our original sentence was, I travel, I think. Yes, I travel. Okay. So if I'm asking a question, let's, let's use the second. Um, so you travel is a complete sentence. It's only two words. So if we, we want to ask a question, you might hear a lot of people say you travel, which is fine, but the complete version of that is, do you travel? Okay. So we're going to use do and does in that present tense. Does she travel? Okay. Let's try something else. Um, do we um, do we know the difference? Okay. Just give a couple different examples here. Okay, do, and then, so we've got does here. Do we, do they um, comprehend the, um, to use some different words here so we're also you know practicing grammar and 
elevating our vocabulary. Okay, so do they comprehend the consequences? So we've got I, we can say, do I travel? It's more, it's, you know, it's not a very common question when you're asking yourself uh, a question like this. You don't really, we don't really do that, but it could come up if you, somebody says, do you travel? And you say, oh, do I travel? Like kind of like to clarify something. Um, that is a, a form that we could use. It's just not very common. And then you could say also with the negatives, um, don't you travel? Doesn't she travel? It's kind of the same question in terms of meaning as the positive. It's just a kind of like clear. It's like you're in the middle of a conversation and you're clarifying. Um, don't we know the difference? Uh, and don't they comprehend the consequences? Um, sorry, that's, I have that there. And then obviously then the answers to these are yes, I do and no, she doesn't, okay? Um, so let's write one example for each here. Yes, I do, no, I don't, okay? Um, and then yes, she does. Again, practicing that pronunciation, it sounds like this. Uh, does and no let's see no she doesn't and then that would sound like does actually s is not there it's a z sound doesn't okay so you can even think of that way to write it you know when you are um pronouncing it doesn't 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 okay Okay, so now we understand the positive, the negative, the contractions of do, and then the questions, okay? Let's do a little bit of practice together here at the desk. And then um, let's make sure, okay, we'll study that next time. So let's do one set of just practice together. So I'm gonna switch over to my other, um, camera here and we will look at this together. Okay, so here's a quick um, little lesson that we can kind of practice what we just discussed. Um, and the good thing about this is that it's not talking about how we form it, but we're choosing um, which, which one makes the most sense. So here's a conversation between Taro and Marissa. Taro says, there's Miguel, he talks to Luisa. This is the simple present, but the correct one is he's talking to Luisa, okay? Because it's happening right now. We can see that in the conversation or in the, excuse me, in the picture right here. Marissa says, yes, they take a class together this semester or they're taking a class together this semester. Okay, what do you guys think? They take a class together this semester or they're taking? So we're going to go with their taking, even though this is referring to classes in the past, present, in the future, it's talking about a set period of time from here to here, which is now, right? They are in the process of taking a class together. Does that make sense? So they started the class here. They will take the class for this period. And because they're referencing a period of time, you can say they're taking. Okay, Taro says they stand very close to each other. They stand or they're standing. Okay, so right now they are standing. Okay, here's another one. Do you think, are you thinking that they date, they're dating? Do you think? So we didn't talk about this yet, but there are some verbs, they're called non-action verbs, okay, in English, where we don't use the ing form. So we say we don't use ing, and they're called non-action or stative verbs. And think is one of them. So we can put here, think is an example. Hopefully you can read my writing. No, um, like. So 
for example, then we don't say I, um, I am knowing my friend or I am liking this pizza, right? Um, people say it, it's just not correct. Okay. So I, I'm here to teach you guys the correct form of English. Okay. Um, okay. So do you think we're going to go with that? Do you think, because, and then, and again, you will hear this. It's just the, the difference is that isn't that we can't use, are you thinking it's just that, that it doesn't change the meaning that makes sense. Okay. It doesn't change the meaning. So do you think that they date or are you thinking they're dating? Are they're going to have those two? If you're comparing these two, they're going to have the same meaning. That's kind of one of the features of a non-action verb. Okay. So do you think that they date or that they're dating? This sounds better to me. Okay. That they are dating. That means that they're in a relationship. They are boyfriend and girlfriend or that they are kind of more than friends, right? Okay, so his answer then, or excuse me, Marissa's answer is no, I don't think, no, I'm not thinking that it means it's meaning anything special. Okay, let's just start stop there because there's a lot in this last sentence. So no, I don't think, we're gonna go with that one, that it means, because this is again something, this is one of those stated verbs, so you say, we don't really say it's meaning, okay? Anything special. So there they're talking about um, that's the fact that they're dating, okay? Um, and then finally, I come and I coming from Costa Rica, and people usually stand are standing that close to each other there. I come. Is that something that is regular, right? I come from Costa Rica or I'm from Costa Rica. And people usually, so this is a nice indicator here that we know that this will be present tense. People usually stand that close to each other there, okay? Okay, so um, if you are watching this on your phone or your computer, go ahead and take a screenshot screenshot this and I would like for you to work on this part on your own okay so you're going to choose what do you do or what are you doing okay oh I okay so you're going to choose the underlined one and you're going to circle it okay let's do this first one together Li Wu says hi Paolo what do you do or what are you doing which one sounds better to you guys what do you do these are two different kinds of questions. Actually, what do you do and what are you doing are very different questions, okay? What do you do means what is your job or, you know, do you go to school or what is your daily, what is your daily, you know, obligations, I guess, or what are you doing is something that what are you doing right now, okay? Okay. So let's go back over here and I'm going to pull you guys back over. So please go ahead and take a screenshot of that. Okay, so we are back. Um, so let's, let's let us finish for today. Um, I would like for you guys to work on that section there. Maybe even just as you're watching the video, pause and then rewind and go ahead and do that second conversation. And then we will handle that and review it in our class on Thursday. So come back here um, Thursday at 10 a.m. That's Mountain Standard Time. And we will continue working on the, the intermediate grammar um, topics and throughout, throughout the month of May. So, so glad you're here. If you're also interested, right after this class, I'm starting the Advanced Grammar 1 class. So we'll be doing a little similar concepts um, to this one, but more practice. So feel free to join us, and I can't wait to see you guys.